Hi everyone, so first of all I took a shadow box that I'd made deeper um, as you would have seen in another tutorial. Um, basically I just stuck a cobble box onto the back of the frame to make it deeper. Then I cut out little um, rectangles of card and stuck it all over the walls and floor to create this like brickwork, stonework effect and then covered the whole thing in a layer of um, grout um, just regular tile grout that you get from the hardware store and once that was dry then it's time to it was time to paint so I painted the whole thing black first of all um, and made sure that the black gets in all the nooks and crannies you need to leave the grout to dry for 24 hours as well um, you can speed the process up a little bit by using a heat gun but um, you are best off waiting the 24 hours if possible just to make sure it's all fully cured then um, I'm painting everything black with acrylic paint while I'm waiting for that layer to dry I need to make the little um, like tomb sarcophagus thing um, if you remember in a previous tutorial I made a little sculpture of Ned this is the statue to go in the tomb so now I need to make the stone coffin and what I'm going to do is make that from cardboard so first of all I needed to work out how big a box I was making obviously I haven't made it the usual width because it's got a fit in the frame so I have made it um, slightly thinner than what it would be um, depth wise but um, I've got the length that I needed so first of all I had a look and see to see whether this size box would fit and it did fit in the frame but it filled a bit too much of the area up so I needed to make the box thinner and ever so slightly shorter so you'll see in a bit I cut up the cardboard and make my uh, little sarcophagus tomb shape um, a bit smaller and a bit thinner because I didn't want to I didn't want it to cover all of the floor I wanted some of the floor exposed so I can put um, like moss and leaves and stuff on afterwards so here I'm just working out roughly how big I'm going to want to make this and just folding over this card and having a look And then it's just a case of trimming everything down um, and gluing everything into place and just straightening off the edges. I wanted the edges as straight as possible because obviously I'm going to try and make this look like it's made out of stone. So I don't want, um, you know, weird angles and stuff. I want it to be fairly straight. And it's fairly easy to make, basically just making a box. Um, so I've got the three sides as you can see here, so it's the bottom and the two sides, the front and back. Pop a little bit of glue at the top, excuse my shaking hands, I do shake of the morning. And also the glue hadn't quite melted yet so I was having to squeeze a lot harder. And then I place that onto another piece of card and that will form the other side at the top. And then in a bit I'll do the same with the sides where I get some smaller pieces of card and stick them on the side. And then once I've stuck them on I just trim them to make sure that they're all the length that they need to be. Um, because obviously if they are a bit big or overlapping it's going to look weird. So I'm just making sure everything is all level and all finishes in the same sort of place. like so so a bit of glue and don't worry if the texture of the card is showing we'll cover that up with um, the texture and stuff that that we apply next so it's not going to look like a cardboard box once it's fully decorated I did contemplate making a little wooden coffin like I did before um, when I did the haunted village, um, but I wanted stone, this like a stone type of 
cut of sort of um, coughing this time. And I'm just checking for size. And then the next thing to do is make a lid to go over the top. To do that, I've just got a piece of card that's ever so slightly wider than what I've already used for the box and made it so it would have a small overlap at the front to make it look like the lip of the lid over the edge of the box. And I did the same at the back by just trimming the card down and then glue down those flappy edges. If you're gluing both of them at the same time like I did, just glue one and press that against your table to apply pressure and then glue the other one at the front and then you can press both down at the same time. It just saves a bit of time. And I'm going to do the exact same thing where I get a little piece of card to fill in the gap on either side of this lid and then just trim it to shape. And try not to get any like big blobs of glue or anything because that will just show up when you paint afterwards. So there you go, that's my basic sort of box shape. I'm filling in the gaps where you can see the corrugations of the card uh, with hot glue and smoothing it down. I do actually cover this bottom bit in another piece afterwards, but if you weren't going to do that, you can just do this where you fill it in. This is where I'm going to finish off the lid. So I'm just gluing around the edges of the lid so it'll only stick to the lid. And then I'll trim off all the excess card. If you're not impatient like me, you'll find the card doesn't stick to your scissors, but I'm impatient and I tend to cut everything while the glue is still, dry, still wet. So that's why you'll see the, uh, the glue sticks to my scissors. But if you wait, um, it, you can just trim it off fine with no problems. You do have to be careful because you can actually pull it back off like I did, but I'm not too bothered, I'll just fix it, it's fine. And then I did make this lid piece a bit too long, so I had to lift up the edge and trim it. And that's your basic uh, stone coffin shape, like so. And for mine, I did add like, um, obviously I went around all the seams where you could see the cardboard showing through um, to smooth it all down and round it all off. Um, you could use some filler or grout in this just to fill those little gaps and smooth it off. I think what I should have done in hindsight is maybe used the uh, filler for the texture. Um, so it would be the same sort of texture as the stonework for the walls. But I decided to use um, my hot glue because it dries quicker. So here I'm filling in all the edges and gaps where there's all the corrugated card showing through. And then what I did was I applied glue over the top making patterns and like a lot of texture and stuff. So basically I covered the whole thing in hot glue and then kept scraping into the glue with the tip of the glue gun while it was hot to add texture. I painted the coffin black and dry brushed um, grey over the top and while I was waiting for that to dry I made the lantern. This is from a miniature model kit and it's just like a couple of little brass fittings and this plastic dome and I just stuck them in an arrangement so instead of making like a lamp for the uh, miniature kit it made a lantern to go on the wall. I might modify this later on, but for now, this is the lantern I'm using. Just make sure that you check everything works before you get too far in the making of your lantern. Unfortunately, when I tested at this point, my battery was, the batteries were dead. Um, oh no. I thought this was the other bit that I recorded. Um, yeah, so just make sure everything is working, just following the instructions that was in the model kit. Because basically what I do is I buy little model kits cheap and then I'll use elements out of them to make my own stuff. Um, so obviously what I like with a lot of the model kits I get is they come with like little lighting rigs. So I use those for my own creations. 
Then I've got this little wooden bead that I'm going to stick um, at the bottom of the lantern because what I'm making is like a lantern that comes out of the wall and then bends upwards. So I needed something to fill the gap between the two little pieces of metal that I'd got. Luckily these wires for these um, LEDs are very thin. So they're very easy to thread through. And the whole lighting rig just works off two AAA batteries in a little um, battery compartment thing. And I'm hot gluing everything together because it's nice and quick, nice and easy. Just be careful not to hold the, hot, the end of the hot glue gun next to the wires for too long because it will melt the casing on the wires. So you do have to be careful. I've, what I tend to do is I put the tiniest amount of glue on stick on the thing that I want to stick and then I blow a lot on it to make it cool down really quickly so that the casing on the cable doesn't actually get um, doesn't like melt or anything and then later on I can paint this all black if I need to so I'm sticking this on the back of the bead because this is the bit that's going to mount it on the wall and then I'm filling that gap in with hot glue, which I can then paint black later on. And again, I'm blowing on it to make sure it cools quickly. And it also sets everything in the position I want it to sit, to sit in. Oh, actually at this point in the film, I haven't um, done the dry brushing, on, dry brushing on the coffin, but I'll do that in a bit. So that makes the little lantern and I'm just checking at every step that the um, power still goes through to the LED, making sure I haven't melted any cables or snapped any cables because these cables are very delicate that the LEDs are mounted to. One thing I did like with this kit that I got, um, the LED was already mounted to its two wires, whereas usually you have to wrap around the delicate wires around the the LEDs and then put heat shrink on but this was already done for me so I only had to connect the wires to the battery pack so as you can see for the top coffin originally I put like a kind of a pattern at the top um, but I do get rid of all of this I just melted all of the glue on the surface of the coffin with my heat gun smoothed it all down with a um, piece of card and then that removed that weird pattern because um, I wasn't happy with how it looks and it gave it the more sort of slightly stone effect once I smoothed the glue down later on and I then paint dry brushed over the top with grey so ignore this bit, this bit was where I decided it looked horrible so I do fix this later on then I started placing the objects inside the tomb and I'd already dry brushed the brick um, and stuck the Ned statue in and the coffin. As you can see the coffin's got a lot better texture on it now. Um, to insert the lantern what I did was just use my Dremel to drill a hole through the side of all the card, all the layers of card, threaded the wires through and then glued the lantern to the wall. And obviously I checked before I glued it in place that everything was still working. Here what I'm doing now is I'm using my hot glue gun to add cobwebs, to stick down some moss. I want this to look like he's, Ned's been asleep for many, many years. Um, maybe he had a, a bad experience and people were trying to catch him. Um, so he decided, forget it, I'm just going to stay in my tomb. And he's had a sleep for centuries. So everything's a bit mossy and overgrown. The reason the light's flickering here is because I hadn't put the um, covering on the exposed wires yet and they were they were cross crossing with each other. Then I made a little shield with a sort of rough bat symbol and an F on it for, and put some copper um, gilding wax over the top of it to form his like family crest. And yeah, that's it. That's how I made Ned's tomb in a frame. And this will look a lot better, obviously lit up at the night time, um, but this is what it looks like during the daytime if I put the light on. And yeah, so this is Ned's tomb and I've made the miniature in a frame so I can hang it on my wall so it doesn't take up um, desk space. And as you can see, I've put heat, um, 
glue, heat glue, hot glue where the wires joined together, taped all the wires down and then painted over the tape with black just to disguise the wires on the outside a bit. But I don't like putting the wires like inside the case of the frame in case I need to replace anything. It's easy just to rip the wires out if I do it this way. And that's what it looks like with the lights off. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.